should you powder coat your jet ski trailer? Well, stick around because I'm going to turn this 26 year old jet ski trailer from this to this. Plus, I'm going to show you the powder coating process and tell you everything you need to know. So let's talk jet ski trailers. Historically, when you buy a jet ski trailer, the go-to option is the standard, let's face it, boring galvanized trailer, which if you've ever owned one, even a brand new one, you'll learn pretty quickly the galvanized finished goes milky looking almost instantly after one salt ride, even with good maintenance, care and washing. The trade-off has always been owners accept the poor aesthetic finish of galvanization on the basis and the merit that galvanization is the best corrosion protection, specifically against salt water. But in my experience, I'm not convinced. I I purchased my XPDI, this one here, three years ago on a brand new galvanized trailer. Literally, within one salt ride, the trailer developed that milky appearance on the galvanization. I subsequently, me being me, spent hours trying to reinstate that shiny new appearance of galvanization by polishing it, but well, there's not really a way of regaining that shiny, almost chrome look once it's kind of hit the salt water and it's oxidized. The challenge with conventionally polishing galvanization is it's a very thin top layer of zinc coating. Now the zinc coating is the protective properties, if you like, that sits over the bare metal and it basically prevents oxidization of the metal, i.e. rust. However, it's literally microns. Now microns isn't even one mil, so that's, well, pretty small. If you're to polish the galvanization, essentially cutting it back, you're removing those microns of zinc, therefore exposing the bare metal, essentially the same as scratching it or actually exposing the metal. Therefore, the water and all of the elements are gonna to get to the metal, leaving it compromised, hence you can't polish galvanization. When you think of the amount of times you've seen a great looking jet ski on eBay, Facebook, I was gonna say Amazon, it'd be great if Amazon sold jet skis, to then see the rusty looking trailer and it just lets the overall appearance of the jet ski down. What you'll find, even when owners have been diligent and washed the salt water off of the trailer, you still get that milky and ultimately rusty appearance to the trailer, even with good care. Galvanization isn't exempt to rust and it is an inevitability. So why sacrifice looks if there's no guarantee of longevity? Well, there's a new kid on the block and its name's powder coating. Okay, so powder coating isn't new and there have been powder coated trailers around for for a little while. However, they're not really mainstream yet. There's not a ton on the actual market, as typically they're only offered as costly optional extras. Why? Well, the nerdy answer is powder coating over galvanization is a tricky process and requires specific processes to do correctly. There is this vital step called the gassing out step. I'm not making this up, guys. It is actual step, which in basic term, guys, means taking the galvanized trailer, baking it in an oven, which is kind of the step within powder coating, but it's a pre-step. This essentially allows the zinc to gas out from the galvanized the zinc, if not gassed out, hopefully you're following, will then actually lift the powder coat. And when you come to powder coat, if powder coat lifts, it's then likely gonna crack, which compromises the actual finish. Therefore, you probably guessed it, powder coating presents more complexity to do right. Thus, additional time and energy, money, all the things that go with it for manufacturers. And then the fear on top of that for most manufacturers is they can't confidently provide warranty, which is what they wanna do with all of their trailers, for a cosmetic-based finish. Powder coating by nature is a hard outer shell coating, so once once cracked or compromised, it's essentially gonna peel away. But, and it's an important but, and the bit they don't tell you, if powder coated correctly, powder coat is super strong and durable, and the chances of actually peeling are very minimal. I can vouch for this, I've had the XPDI trainer, this one behind me, for the last three years powder coated, and well, the only bit that's actually peeled or become compromised is the axle, and well, that's because the axle wasn't powder coated, it was automotively sprayed. You can't spray axles on jet ski trailers. They typically use pressed rubber inside of the actual axle Himself, which, well, if you put it in the oven, it would melt. It's rubber. Therefore, your only choice is to either choose to automotively spray it, to color coat it, color match it, which is what obviously I've done because I'm a nerd, or you leave it exposed because you can't obviously powder coat that specific element. Baking, not cakes and scones like Megs would like, is the final step of the powder coating process, which you'll see in a sec if you keep watching once I stop talking. Obviously, if you use automotively spraying, it goes without saying, it's not a recommendation I would make, and those parts are likely gonna peel or become compromised a lot sooner than your powder coating, because obviously, automotively spraying over galvanization isn't a great principle. Galvanization by nature is a very high shine, slippery surface, so i.e. poor adhesion for your traditional spraying. So if you are to automotively spray, <gasps> 
then you're going to need to do lots of priming in the first instance to actually get that paint to stick to the actual galvanization. However, with powder coating, you're talking mill, so a lot thicker finish, and it's baked as like a hard outer shell, so it tends to stick to the galvanization with a better chance than your traditional automotive. Are you still following? Plus, there is an additional step which most competent powder coaters will use, which is an adhesion step, which is essentially a first coat to the actual substrate. It's then baked to gas out again. You're becoming familiar with the gassing out process. Sounds quite crude. Then it's actually powder coated. So there's a bit more principle, if done correctly, with powder coating over galvanization than automotively spraying. Spraying jet ski trailers with conventional spray paint is a disaster waiting to happen. I definitely don't recommend it. For all the trailers you've probably seen on Facebook Marketplace where people have got handy with DIY spray cans, you know exactly the trailers I mean. They always peel. As soon as they hit the salt water, it never looks good. Stay away from that, guys. Which leads me nicely on to, you may be asking, why do a lot more people not have their trailer powder coated? Well, the honest answer is there's a lot of confusion and sometimes not even knowing what powder coating is. So cost, is it expensive? Without sounding like a politician, it depends. If you buy a powder coated trailer as an optional extra from a manufacturer or likely a dealer when you're purchasing your jet ski, you're likely going to pay a price hike of around £600. As to be fair, they ultimately need to make a profit. In my opinion, a £600 price jump when a trailer's likely already going to be a £1,000 to £1,500, maybe even more in the first instance, it's a big price jump. Hence why most people don't really opt for powder coating as an extra. However, there's been a lot of howevers and whys in this intro. If you're adventurous enough like me to disassemble and prep your trailer, I got the Yamaha trailer powder coat for £175 including all of the ancillary parts like wheel hubs, bunk brackets, light board bars, which directly from the manufacturer is likely going to cost you more to coat those parts. Typically manufacturers will just powder coat the main frame and not the ancillary parts. If you powder coat the trailer yourself, not yourself obviously, but you do it yourself, then you can basically go to town and powder coat whatever parts you want. So that's a lot of info right guys, but hopefully it gives you a good insight as to powder coat and galvanization. Notice I've not called this versus because I would always advise using the galvanization for its benefits and its rust protection, but then powder coat over the top as long as you're following the principles of the gassing out, which I spoke a lot about, and you can get the best of the both worlds. So I'm going to stop talking and let's get in to this video show you the powder coating process. We had to shop blast the main body of it because there was that much orange rust on it. So the rust had got into the metal so we've had to shot blast it, so it's cleaned it all off, it's all fine, it's, all, it's, it's intact, if you can see there, we've left the handle bit galvanised, because that was fine. If we left it as it was, we'd have had to degrease it and there would still have been rust on it, it wouldn't have looked as good. So it's just giving it a rough surface, so then we abrade it and denib it to a smooth finish, and then it's sent down for priming. What now I'll do with the galve, I'll degrease the galve and then rub it down. Thin is, it's standard thin is, so it's just there, uh, it cleans all the grease off, clean metal like this. So, as if it, I went on to the shop blast stuff, it just fill it with hairs, you don't want that, so you'll only use this on shiny metals. <laughs> 